Hey guys, happy Halloween. Yes, that's right. This is Talking Sass. I am your host, Sassy Steffi. And of course, this is my Halloween edition. I'm so excited. I have a great guest lined up. But before we get there, I want to talk about trying to get a guest for this show. Originally, I had planned to have someone from the Travel Channel come on and talk about all things October, all things spooky, paranormal, horror, all of it. Unfortunately, he had some time constraints and wasn't able to make it due to some other projects that he had going on, which, hey, it happens, right? So I was freaking out. I was scrambling, trying to find a guest that I thought would be a great caliber guest for this week. And thankfully, this guest got back to me and he was like, yeah, I would love to come on the show. So a million thanks to him for that, especially because I was losing it. (laughs) But if you don't know who he is, he has been in a whole bunch of Kevin Smith movies, including Clerks, Dogma, I mean, you name it, right? Jay and Silent Bob. He's a voice actor. He's also been a stage actor. He's a producer. He's been on two seasons of Fireball Run, which we will definitely talk about today. And quite frankly, he's not even supposed to be here. (laughs) And if that doesn't give it away, well then, get ready to spend your Halloween with O'Halloran. Hey guys, welcome to Talking Sass. This is our Halloween episode. I am so excited. And you know what? Today, things didn't go exactly the way I planned. I planned to have somebody on who was from the Travel Channel who was going to talk about all sorts of fun paranormal stuff. But unfortunately, things have a way of not working out. But in my case, it worked out for the better because my guest today is A plus in my book. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy this conversation that we're going to have. I'm entitling it Halloween with O'Halloran. Nice. I like it. Thank you, Steph, for having me on. Oh, I'm so glad that you can make it. For those who don't know, this is Brian O'Halloran. What's going on there, peeps? And if you don't know him, he is from great films such as Clerks, Clerks 2, Dogma, basically anything Kevin Smith has done, this man has been a part of. And yeah, you can... I love that merchandise, Sam, behind you, or like everything. And I am truly blessed because I got to meet Brian through something totally away from acting and wrestling completely, which I haven't actually gotten the chance to talk about, so I'm glad that I'm going to be able to, is Fireball Run. If you go to Amazon and you have Prime, you can check it out there, Fireball Run. And what it is, is it was a bunch of teams, usually about 40, would go out and it was like Trivial Pursuit and America's the board game. And they had no idea where they were going. They had clues on how to get there. There was some hilarity in between everything. And some of the teams are very interesting, but that was all for a plastic road sign. They didn't win a big prize at the end, but the camaraderie was great. And then each team had a, um, an eight by 10, which they had 5,000 of to give out of a missing child from their general vicinity in the States, because we had people from all over the States. So they were having fun and raising awareness for missing children. I mean, what else? I mean, it was was a fantastic time. A fantastic time. And uh, so many different vehicles, so many different kind of themes behind the teams that we were all a part of. Um, I joined the show at season 10 and uh, continued on with season 11. Um, We went uh, in season 10, it was the Northeast section of the United States. And season 11 was the upper Midwest where the finish line was Mount Rushmore. Uh, So craziness ensued. Uh, Sassy Steph here was just one of the best co-hosts. We also had, of course, um, uh, Ian, not Ian. Ivan, yeah. Ivan, Ivan, who was the other uh, co-host of the show, and just a lot of fun. And uh, if you ever get a chance, it's half-hour episodes. Uh, find it on Amazon Prime. Uh, I was with Team One Hundred, the Queen of Versailles team, and you found uh, we were the fun group. To be honest with you, we might have not been the fastest vehicle, or <laughs> maybe not even the smartest group, but we had a lot of fun doing what we did. Well, definitely. Your group was um, Jackie and Robin, two of the ladies that was in your team. They were uh, known for being late. 
Yes. Well, listen, <laughs> Jackie Siegel, for those who don't know, there was a documentary about her and her husband building the largest residence in the United States. Uh, Jackie Siegel and her husband, uh, David Siegel, own Westgate, which is a large uh, resort um, company that owns timeshares and hotels all over the United States and beyond. And so uh, she's used to being, let's say, um, served more than <laughs> being on time for places. So uh, it, Jackie was, uh, is awesome to hang out with um, and uh, Robin, her good friend. And don't forget the Chuck Handsome Ryan. Yes, uh, definitely. Ryan uh, uh, was def Nolan was definitely a, uh, a charmer of our group. Oh, you guys were, I mean, like you said, one of the most fun groups. I mean, Jackie and Robin and Ryan and yourself, not just like having a good time, but also one of the nicest teams. Not that anybody was particularly mean, but there were pranks being played a lot of oh, times. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, you're trying to delay your other competitors from getting to places on time. And even the rules themselves, when we were given our missions which was just an envelope you opened up and had a whole bunch of clues that you had to figure out. Now you were able to access the internet, reach out to fan bases on Twitter or social media, whatever. Um, but there'd be times where they give you these bonus kind of uh, places to go visit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they were just wild goose chases and you had to figure that out because it would sometimes take you off the main route. Cause every day we would start in a city and then end in a city or town at the end of the day where you literally checked in and checked out of every place we stayed that night we check in the mm -hmm. next morning we all check out and we leave um and so sometimes it would take you off the main route on your final destination you could be delayed a good hour hour and a half and at the finish line your finishing time gave you points towards the end goal of of getting um you know, the plastic sign that said, hey, I'm a winner. Uh, the <laughs> main goal, though, was to be honest with you, it's to hand out the pictures of the missing children who every team had a different child. So 40 teams, 40 kids. Uh, we were very fortunate over the 11 years that the show ran uh, to assist in the location of over 52 or 54 children, which was uh, phenomenal to hear. As a matter of fact, our last season, one of the kids themselves called in to say, this picture might be me because I don't know a lot of what happened to me as a kid. And so uh, it's, it's a really intriguing aspect of a reality TV kind of road race kind of thing. So I enjoyed it. I, I miss it, to be honest with you. I miss the camaraderie that all the teams had with each other and just the general fun and competi you know, competitive nature of it all. It was, it was a lot of fun. And I mean, I got to know basically every person I did my research on for months in advance, as you send in your information to the guys at Fireball Run, I was going on the back end of their website, taking all that information and then Googling every name to get even more information because I was on the battlefields with you, basically not at the missions, but you would come through a lunch stop We'd say hello. Um, actually, the years you did it, I don't think I broadcasted live at lunch, did I? I don't um, think so. Maybe once or twice at most, yeah. just because we were so under the gun, yeah. get time-wise, getting to places. And especially the last season in the upper Midwest, cell service was incredibly spotty, especially oh, yeah. in the Dakotas was very, very iffy. But how beautiful was that there, oh. the Dakotas? I'd never been, and it's still the most breathtaking thing I've ever seen besides maybe the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, if people have a chance, once uh, once we're all clear to travel with without any issues, um, the Dakotas were, def South Dakota especially, was absolutely beautiful for people who want to go visit the Badlands. It's definitely an eerie moonscape kind of feel to it. And lots of fun things to do along the way too. Cause yeah. like I saw there's, I know there was one particular one. I don't know if you guys got to go to it all. That was a complete tourist trap, but it was like the only thing within like hundreds of miles as you're traveling in South Dakota and like people would get off, but then like you're stuck there. Cause like pe so many people stop there and then it's like a gridlock. Yeah. Like you have to literally keep going because everybody stops there. Yeah. There were a few things like that. And, um, you know, like uh, one of the missions took us in Iowa 
out to the corn farm that hosted the movie um oh field God, of dreams the, field of dreams that's right so we actually went out to that cornfield and that farmer kept how the setup was and the house that was kevin costner's in the film and everything and uh, even though people are on this time crunch to get to the final finish line that day people wanted to hang out and you got to they had uh actors who were baseball players who dressed in that period piece and it was really really cool and the uh the woman who owns the property and the and the farm um said that they were building in a in like that year or the year following an actual really large kind of uh minor league field there and i think just recently major league baseball either last season i think it was held a game at that field oh beautiful and yeah. as an as an actor yourself i mean going to another side of a movie that is so iconic yeah, yeah. i mean that's yeah. got to be unreal yeah I mean, uh, even as a kid, uh, 18 years old, I was traveling with friends from New York up to Milwaukee, and we took a train from New York to Penn Station, and the layover was, for a couple hours was in Chicago. And the movie, The Untouchables, with Kevin Costner, funny enough, uh, had come out like a year prior. And there's that really tense scene where Kevin Costner, as Elliot Ness, needs to get the bookkeeper of Al Capone, who's being put on a train that night, from the Chicago train station. I mean, me and my, my friends remember going to the train school. I'm like, oh my God, this is the staircase up to where. And so we nerdily reenacted photos of us laying on the floor. Take, you know, it was just stupid. But it is funny when you finally go to places that were in films that are unique, especially that you go like, this is where such and such was. Uh, I've I've had several situations like that. Being from Ohio, the Ohio State Reformatory there was where Shawshank Redemption was filmed. Right. Love it. And inside, like not the cafeteria area, but like um, an area in between the cells. Right. They still have the pipe that he crawled through at the end of the movie. Wow. So yeah, it's amazing you get to see that. And then when I went to England, I went to King King's Cross Station just because I was a huge Harry Potter nerd. There you go. And I got to like have my little cart going through the platform nine and three quarters. Like they put that up just for the fans that were coming yep. in because everybody was coming in. Yep. So like I've definitely iconic movies that you love and then you get to go and experience, yeah. like do your own reenactments. It's a lot of fun. It is. And sometimes like even fans who are fans of the movie clerks, mm -hmm. they'll go to the quick stop, which is a real fully operational convenience store in Leonardo, New Jersey, and people get there and like, holy crap. And they take their picture outside the store, but then they go inside, they're like, holy crap, this is tiny. How did you guys shoot a movie <laughs> in such a tiny space? And it does awaken people to the aspect of like, wow, this so they were just this far away from each other and camera had to have been just here because there's the refrigeration machine and all this other stuff. And so I get that a lot from fans. It's like, how did you guys shoot a movie in such a tiny space? But it is what it is. Movie magic. It is. <laughs> I mean, that, sometimes I wonder how we did that with Fireball Run because there was one, I don't know if you got to do this one when um, on, the, on season 11, where I had to crawl into, it was a fire safety facility of some sort. And I had, it was where they trained their firemen and I had to crawl in like this, like crawl space basically under the school. And I had to find, it was smoky and I had to find the person that was in there. I had to administer uh, CPR and all this stuff. Like, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. But this is like, we want to show you guys what we actually do. And it was like, I don't know how that turned out on camera. Cause like, it was so tight. It was smoky. It, I'm kicking up dirt as I'm crawling around in this little crawl space, trying to find this, dummy and administer cpr it was crazy and but movie magic it just but happens the, the audience wants to know did he live yeah of course i'm never gonna let anybody uh, die on my on my behalf my my not sister on my, <laughs> not on my watch my sister-in-law is a cpr instructor so i would definitely oh, <laughs> yeah you would never live that down at thanksgiving no that would be that would be a rough story to tell if that happened <laughs> That's like family members of auto mechanics. Like, how do you not change your oil? Your dad's an auto mechanic. <laughs> yeah, I, me, I'm clueless on cars. So it always goes to the shop for everything. That's fine.
Yeah. Keeps people keeps people paid. That's what they're there for. That's right. And in these times right now, everybody needs to be able to work. Yeah. And uh, in most states, if not all, uh, automobile mechanics were considered essential. So yeah. they were always allowed to work. Thank goodness. Because yeah. I don't know what I'd do without somebody if something happened to my car. And I right. had... Plus, I mean, more and more cars have more computer components than yeah. just old school engines like they used to. Well, my car was a beater until uh, about July. I was I went and finally got a new car. So yeah. right now, I, I have no need for a mechanic, thankfully. A new kid usually brings in the new car because all of a sudden you start going, how am I how am I alive myself in this car? I'm not going to put my child in this death trap on wheels. Definitely. Having a family changes everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Head to toe. Everything's <laughs> changed. <laughs> but let's talk more about the movies that you were in. Because like sure. I said, you've done a lot of Kevin Smith movies. Yep. You have also are a stage actor. And right now, are they even allowed to do any kind of stage productions? No, not. I mean, if you're going to talk, Broadway, professional Broadway, they had pushed it to January and now they have pushed it to May um, of next year. And that's because until you're allowed to gather indoors, I mean, you're think about the rehearsal process mm -hmm. for a play, you're getting together and, you know, Broadway shows, especially musical, you could have like 20 to 50 cast members, depending on what kind of play or musical it is. So as of right now, no. Over this time, though, I've done three different staged play readings through Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, started a Facebook group uh, with a bunch of other actor friends of mine called uh, um, Home Quarantine Cabaret. And we've done two shows on that Facebook group. And so I noticed that a lot of TV and film stars are doing readings, reunions of other movies and stuff to raise money for certain charities or political mm -hmm. groups or things like that. Uh, just recently they did um, Dazed and Confused had a reunion nice. reading on Zoom that people would pay to get logged in to the code to watch it. And I think the money went to the uh, Democratic or Voto Latino or something. They were the ones that arranged it. Um, so it's things like that as an actor, as long as you're doing some interaction, keeping your, it's like going to a gym for an athlete for us, mm -hmm. keeping your mind sharp, uh, interacting with fellow actors and entertaining at the same time. And you're not going to hear applause. You're not going to hear laughter. But in the end, if you're doing some sort of good, it, it's all worth it. Well, definitely. And you add the charity benefit to it as well. Then, you know, yep. you're not only keeping your, your mind and your body ready to go for when you can return to the stage, but you're also benefiting other people who need that kind of uh, attention Correct. at the moment. Yeah. That's awesome. And one of the quotes, and I, I didn't write it down, so I don't want to say it, it verbatim, but you said being a stage actor is one of the best things because it keeps your mind and everything... Like you're sharp witted, everything's ready yeah. to go. Star, you know, I break down uh, the acting industry in four different categories. There's film acting, which is the strong point of a director. If you want to be a director, get into film because they're in control of the shots. They're in control of usually how the final edit comes out. They pick what they find, which take they prefer, things like that television is the writer's medium if you want to be a writer get into television because you're writing working with characters episode after episode after episode so you can write these worlds of these characters for hopefully you know six seven years if you're doing television um theater theater is the actor's medium this is where once rehearsals are done and you're doing live shows that's it you're on stage you're performing live. There's no stop, wait, let me do it again. You're getting your instant feedback from your audience. If it's a comedy, you're hearing the laughter. If it's some serious drama, you may hear crying, you may hear, hear gas, so, you know, and you're getting the reaction. Plus you're getting applause at the end of every show. And when you're doing theater, especially if it's Broadway theater, you're doing at minimum eight shows a week because you're doing one show a day or one show 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with matinees on both Sunday and Wednesday. So that's eight shows. So it's a way as an actor to just, if you change it up a little, if you want to. And then there's television and radio in the sense that uh, radio is the sense like if you want to, if you have a great vocal presence and stuff like that, radio, podcasting, things like that, and you're a good to- storyteller, especially, um, it's a great way to make a living. That's amazing. I love how you broke all of that down into like these different categories and which is each person's strong point. Like, yeah, I mean, know. if you want to be highlighted for what you want to do, mm-hmm. those I think are the areas that are best. I mean, writers obviously can need to be there to write movies, just like actors need to perform the movie. And that's where a, a true collaboration happens. Um, but if you're looking, if you think you know what your strong point is, uh, those are the areas that you can, you can move to and have, and have an advantage in. That's amazing. And talking about acting again, because I mean, like I said, you've been in so many things. And I, before we got started, I told you that I watched the uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, but there's also a Clerks 3 coming back. It seems like you got, it was to be determined, I guess, at this point in time, but we're hoping. Yes, uh, we got Jeff back on board wanting to do it. Um, Matter of fact, me and Jeff for the first time, we're at a Comic-Con for the very beginning of this year. Uh, in uh, f- the end of February, we were in just outside of Detroit at Astronomicon. That was Jeff's first ever Comic-Con appearance. Really? He His first it. ever? Yeah, first ever. And uh, he, he really enjoyed it. He didn't know what to expect, but it was a huge turnout for him. The guys, the organizers at Astronomicon were phenomenal. Uh, and then from there, a couple of weeks later, we went to Richmond, Virginia for GalaxyCon Richmond. Now, GalaxyCon is like your typical giant Comic-Con company. Um, they're, they're one of the best, if not the best, in the game. And we were there and that's when things in the news started happening about COVID and things started shutting down and yeah. we took even more precautions than we normally do anyway uh, with hand sanitizers and stuff like that. And then right after that, it shut down, which I jokingly said to fans in the coming weeks and months after that, like, this is what happens when you let Randall loose. He brings the black death and a pandemic to the world. So, um, we're hoping, you know, Kevin, uh, we had a Clerks 3 script quite a few years ago. It was a very dark uh, version of a script uh, that Kevin had put together and things didn't quite work out. And this is talking about like five years, six years ago. Um, so now with the last year or so with Jeff coming back into it, Kevin discussing his idea of what he wants to do with the Clerks 3. Um, I believe it's done and finished now. He hasn't sent it to me yet. Um, in the meantime, he's also written a sequel to Mall Rats, uh, which oh. was, I think, loosely told Mall Brats. I think he wants to shoot that first, and then we'll, that'll lead us into a, a Clerks 3, hopefully. But once again, it all depends, because any television or film production that has started up recently, um, there's incredible uh, protocols that have been put in place by the Screen Actors Guild Union, the Directors Union, and all this other stuff. And it adds about a third more to the cost of making films right now and, and television because things have to be separated. People have to be tested. As a matter of fact, uh, in a couple of weeks, I have to go for a COVID test to film a TV pilot that someone wants me to be a part of. So I just got that call tonight, like, oh, this is going to be the day. This is going to be the doctor's office. you got to go test. And then literally we shoot the next day. Um, and I have friends who are in other productions that are being a whole they The production has taken over an entire floor of a hotel where nobody but production people can go up to that floor so that there's no cross contamination. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it, it's weird right now. And I know Kevin doesn't want to film during this type of situation. It's not necessary. People aren't clamoring like, I need clark street today you know and it's not like it's a television series that ended their last season back in last september and now they Mm -hmm. need their new september season now so um he's gonna wait until we work this out um i'm praying that no later than march of next year we can have some sort of 
treatment slash vaccine for all this that everything can come somewhat come back to normal? Well, definitely. I mean, I can relate to that here in Canada. I mean, where I am in Quebec, they started shutting everything down again because the cases started rising once yeah. again. Yeah. And so like uh, Canadian Thanksgiving was a couple of weeks ago and we couldn't even have our families over. Yeah, so like that, That's what's going on here now. Yeah, it's just it's sad. And, you know, just everybody PSA just for two seconds, wear your mask, wash your hands, keep clean, social distance. Let's do this. Let's get it over with so that yeah. we can all go about our own ways. Because I mean, not just for acting, but wrestling too. And um, WWE. Everything. Yeah, everything. You yeah. know, my mother, my mother uh, works in the uh, hospitality hotel industry for a major hotel chain. Mm -hmm. And um, she hasn't worked since March. And so, um, you know, these people who are in food serve, anything that's public services, restaurants, mm. bars, music venues for live bands. I have friends who, who are in bands who are like, look, we, we're just putting up stuff on Twitch and hopefully people can donate to us and things like that, where it's like, bro, you know, then you see some, some people who don't get it and get together for these giant pool parties in Arkansas or Florida or, or you know, and, and it's, I just think, man, do you, do you not get it? Like, I understand you're cooped up and you may think it's a hoax or whatever, but man, just, just sit down for a couple of weeks and we can get this done and I yeah. can have friends over again. I feel you. And like the people are like, I've noticed in Canada, like I'll see some people in the States be like, oh, this is because of the election and all this. I'm like, you do realize this is happening outside of the United States yeah, too, no. right? Yeah, exactly. We, we uh, as Democrats, we went around and convinced all these other countries, pretend you're sick. Hey, Italy, have at least nearly 100,000 of your citizens die. Shh, don't tell the president. Yeah, it's, it's kooky in my yeah. opinion, but you know. Like I visited Australia and New Zealand four years ago this week, as a matter of fact, and uh, to see that both, well, especially New Zealand has zero yeah. uh, cases anymore. And Australia is shortly following behind. And uh, their pr prime minister of New Zealand, uh, uh, Jacinda Ahern, the woman, uh, she got reelected in a landslide. And this is the same woman who banned all assault weapons within like two weeks of a, uh, a, a, a mosque being shot up. Um, and she got reelected. And it's the most beautiful, like, I love New Zealand. It's, it was the most beautiful country ever. The food is fantastic. The people couldn't have been any nicer. I got to go to Hobbiton, where they filmed The Lord of the Ooh. Rings and The Hobbit. Uh, the farmer whose land they built that whole set on got to keep everything. As a matter of fact, on the other side of the road of his farm, he built this giant visitor center and restaurant and stores. And now he has a big, you know, like event center that looks like giant tents from Hobbiton. And uh, that's where I, I had to buy a map of Middle Earth from Hobbiton. I'm like, my shit's authentic. <laughs> Well, that's how I feel um, for Christmas fans, especially in the States. Mm. Um, now, it, now it's escaping me because I'm thinking Halloween and not Christmas. A, Christ a Christmas story. Yes, house. a Christmas story. Yes. yes, the house in Cleveland. Thank you. I'm yes. so glad that you came uh, up with well, that. Well, it's because a good friend of mine goes every year to visit that house. As do I. Well, when I lived in Cleveland, I used to do the same. And like, I had to have like, a, not, I didn't get the full size, but I got the like mini leg lamp. And I was like, I have to have this from here. He, he goes and does the Airbnb that they offer and stays in the house. That's cool. Yeah. See, the only Him, cool his daughter and his wife, they all go out there just before Christmas and do a weekend at the house. And he dresses up in that silly pink bunny outfit. Oh, I did that too. I, I went and stood in, in the stairway. I have yep. at Christmas time, I put little captions up to say I'm a pink nightmare. <laughs> I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a highlight. If you're going to Cleveland, people, go visit that house. Doesn't matter what time of the year. I no, mean, it's better, obviously, around Christmas. Well, it is just for the nostalgia. But if you go in December, which I have been to the tour, you're like literally in and out. You can't really yeah. play with any of the toys because yeah. it's their high season. But right. if you go in July, 
right. you can go and you can play with all the toys. Like I said, I put on the, the bunny suit. I've gone down to the Christmas tree and taken pictures. I stand in the stairwell and <laughs> taking pictures. I played with the, the rifle. You know, you can play with everything. I fit in under the sink where Ralphie was hiding. Nice. All of it. I pretty much did stick, redid that whole movie. <laughs> did you stick the soap in your mouth? The life I, boy? I did. Actually, it's funny, a story, because I was... Um, when I went to broadcasting school, I was an intern at one of the radio stations there. And I went and I took a bunch of pictures. And because I was their digital intern, I put all the pictures online, like, here's what to do in Cleveland in right. December. And so those pictures stay forever on their server. And somebody did a story about a massive bout of diarrhea hitting. And I was sitting on the toilet with the, with the soap in my mouth. So they used that picture as the main picture on the website. So I don't think I'll ever live that one down. Nope. <laughs> like that That's wasn't hilarious. the point of it, but. No, of course not. But they were like, we need a picture of someone on a toilet quick. Oh, here's one in our registry. We already have one. Perfect. Good. And it's a cross advertisement with the house from Christmas Story. <laughs> Adorable. But I mean, it's fun when you get to go and I mean, we've been talking about different sites that we visited and it's just a yeah. lot of fun. It is. It is. And I can't wait to do it. I can't wait to go back and visit more stuff. Yeah. Like have I just got an offer for um, a Comic Con in Wyoming next year, next April. It's a uh, Wyoming pop culture con me uh billy west who's the voice of ren and stimpy fry from futurama he's the red m and m you know his voice he's he's done tons of stuff laura tom who's done the batman series and another female voiceover artist who's done tons of stuff so i'm looking forward to that because i've never been to wyoming before and i remembered because the only thing i was like ooh, wyoming i wonder how close that is to the devil's tower which is that big yeah, the rock, rock formation. formation from Close Encounters. Uh, it's a two and a half hour drive. And I'm like, hmm, maybe see if I could figure this out. I've done two and a half hours. I do two and a half hours in a blink now. Yeah. But um, it, I was like, I may want to do that. And then I look and just to the east of where I'm going to be in Cheyenne um, is uh, um, the Mount Rushmore and everywhere we were when we mm -hmm. finished the last season of uh, fireball run so i'm like i can't wait for this and it's so funny because it just came in my email tonight oh that's awesome that would be a lot of fun there's yeah. like a lot of like just little hidden gems and i find in that area like wyoming north dakota south dakota those kind of areas that you know if you get the chance to go and see these kind of things it's just right. amazing well i mean and if i go north west of where i'm going to be is the start of yosemite which I think I haven't gone to, but I think it's like a necessity for every American at some point to visit Yosemite National Park or Yosemite as our president <laughs> has called it. I'm feeling the vibes you're putting down here about make, oh, why it's the Halloween show. We should make sure because it's only a couple of days before election day. If you haven't voted, go out, vote, make your voice Please. heard because it's very important, especially yes. this year. Absolutely. I don't care what party you're from, but just go out. We should, we as the leader of so-called democracy in the entire free world, we should be the leader for the highest percentage of turnout for, for voting. Let this be the year. Let this be the year that we go out. No matter who you're voting for, just let your vo voice be heard. Um, so many other uh, candidates, not just presidential, not just senatorial, every down ballot you even your local school board it's a decision that affects you directly your local fire department gets funded by things like this by the people who find funding for your roads for your schools for your community centers it's a necessity i can't i can't stress enough how it's important definitely so make sure you guys go vote there's no excuses i know me i live in canada my um my voting area is still in Ohio, so I got my absentee ballot. I sent it weeks ago just in case anything about the U.S. Postal Service was going to be in jeopardy. I made sure that my voice is going to be heard, so I hope that all of you do the exact same. Exactly. Another little PSA for everybody. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Another one. We did, we did the mask earlier. Now we yeah. have the voting one. Uh, soon we'll be doing a PSA about drugs soon. We'll see. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we'll fit it in there yeah. somewhere. 
Now, other films that you've been in, and this one actually surprised me. It wasn't a film, actually, but you did voiceover work for Pokemon. Correct. Um, yeah. A friend of mine. A friend of mine was a voiceover director in New York City who worked on other projects that I did voiceovers work. And he's like, hey, man, I got the Pokemon account. I'm like, is that some sort of disease you got to get a shot for? He goes, no, the Japanese kids show Pokemon. I'm like, oh, the little yellow Pikachu thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, I need, uh, I need a bunch of actors. We're doing the movie and we're doing a couple of the TV episodes. I thought of you for a couple of the incidental characters. I'm like, sure, right on. So I came in, I did some voices of some supporting characters in uh, the Zorlock movie, I think it's called. And then a couple of episodes of the actual TV show, which he was trying to explain to me what the show is about. I'm like, <laughs> listen, I, I'd probably learn Japanese faster than you try and explain to me what Pokemon's about. Just tell me what is the, the character I'm playing? What's the situation? What do I need to, you know, convey? And he was like, all right, well, you're in this, you're in the spaceship, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, done, move. And so, um, but when people find out about it, and especially younger kids, they're like, you were in Pokemon? I'm like, I was, but don't ask me any <laughs> questions about it because I don't know what it is about. Yeah, I was going to ask you because earlier we were talking about all of the glorious stuff that you have behind you there on the bookshelves. And I was going to see if you had anything that you had taken from the Pokemon sets. No, it's then that's the thing. It's just voiceover work. Yeah. There's no physical set. I mean, I at, didn't know some, maybe if you got merch some, or anything. Yeah, no, at, at, at any, um, if I didn't think I should get a still shot of my characters in the Pokemon movie. So I'd be like, yeah, that, that was me. Like I have this like a light up bat mm -hmm. that Ooh. lights up. It also makes noise, but it kept making noise too much while I was podcasting. So I had to just mute it, but it's, it kind of looks like a, a vampire Furby. I'm, I'm jokingly calling it. Yeah, it does. Now that you mention it. Yeah. And then I have my Dracula goblet above it. And then my spell, my Frankenstein, my spell books and my skull. So I, I decorated a little bit for, uh, oh, and a bloody hand on a pillow down here. Yeah. I decorated a little, little bit for my, um, for my time, uh, you know, for my background. So I get some sort of good grade as like, oh, he's got an interesting background. I have right here, I the see trick it. or treat. And then unfortunately my mic stand covers it, but I have a sunflower over here because I really love sunflowers and with nice. fall, I think they're beautiful. So very cool. It, it's hard to kind of add anything with everything I already have going on here. I'm already trying to think what am I going to do for Christmas? Maybe just like make some hats and put them on my, my characters around me. Perfect. Or <laughs> get, um, you know, some sort of uh, vinyl and cut them in and then yeah. just stick them on the prints that are behind you. So put the put the print over here that you have with a little christmas hat right yeah. i mean the the red and white already has like snowman kind of colors that you got going yeah on true, very true there you go so these are my prized possessions on my uh wall here what about you i mean you have so many different collectibles behind Ooh, you prized possessions um they're all they're all incredibly meaningful to me i mean there's awards that i've won over the years down here um which are really cool um, uh, hats that are from literally the uh, the first film. This is what we wore to our first film festival. So that's literally as old as the movie. Um, Kevin is always peeking over at me <laughs> right over here. Uh, those are actual fake cigarette cartons of cigarettes from uh, when we did um, Clerks 2. So those are from the set. Um, hand painted uh, like a tattoo artist did a pack of cigarette kind of advertisement here. Um, someone painted a small rendition of the quick stop. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. And that's, and then, that's somebody was a fan that did that for yeah, you? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And brought, it, brought it to a, a comic con and gifted me that um, there's a company that did these kind of like blockhead characters it's kind of like a a pop figure without it being a pop figure. Oh, so, that's awesome too. Look Dante at that. As, as like a blockhead. As a matter of fact, that's the name of the, the company, Blockheads. Nice. Um, so, you know, it's cool when you, you run into, especially at the Comic-Cons, there's so many artists of different, you know, vendors who do different types of art. And uh, when I get to meet them and they're like, oh, we'd love for you to like, 
one guy, um, one girl did these um, greeting cards and one was uh, just this weird clerky turkey. <laughs> I don't know I'm supposed to be here today. Like, you know, some guy does uh, custom tiles if you're going to tile a bathroom and stuff and had all sorts of different pop culture things. So he did one of, Cler of Dante from Clerks 2 and it's got this kind of like speckled yellow sheen. You really can't tell yeah. that in this light, but... Um, so he gave me that. There was a guy who owned one of these 3D printing kind of companies, and he just made me into a 3D figure. Oh, so wow. That's so there. accurate. Yeah. I d yeah. It's a little too accurate with that gut. <laughs> but all right. You know, and things like that that are a lot of fun. Uh, you know, another guy makes custom engraved glasses. So here's a quick stop groceries engraved glass. I, I assure you were open pint glass. Um, so it's a lot of it's a lot of that type of stuff that I'll get from show to show, and then I have my my hockey stuff because I'm a New York Ranger fan. So that's all my hockey collectibles up there. So there's a a few rare autographs up in the hockey puck section, um, and things like that. And then there's just bottles of bourbon because uh, people have found out that I'm a fan of bourbon, and so I'll go to different cons. And um, people will, will just be like, hey, we heard you were a, a fan of bourbon. This is a great local bourbon that we, you know, you should try and stuff like that. And yeah, I'm, I'm shocked during all these months of lockdown that I haven't cracked any of these opened yet. <laughs> that, that may change after November 3rd. Yeah, we'll see what happens, right? But this is amazing. I mean, you have all these fans that are fans of your movies, fans of your work, and you get these really cool mementos. I have some too that I keep, um, not here, they're kind of put away nicely so I don't break them or lose them or anything like that because <laughs> I have a bad habit of that. Mm. And uh, well, Plus now so you have a one-year-old. Yeah, and he is into everything. Yeah. Everything. But uh, it's fun when you have these situations with fans where they come out, like, I mean, I never did a Comic-Con where like I've gone to them, but not, I've never been like a vendor at one or anything like that. But I've done wrestling conventions and stuff like that. And like these people that come out and you don't really realize how much you, I guess, I don't want to say like I emotionally touched anybody no, but you or make, like that, you but make they enjoy an my work. Yeah. yeah, you make an impression. They enjoy your work. They root for your character. To, you know, especially wrestlers come off with these superhuman, if not superpower kind of abilities in their eyes as they're watching as fans. Um, especially when writers are making these incredible stories behind the characters and these grudges and these backstories. It's, it's a lot of fun, um, especially for younger kids to watch and to emulate and to, you know, want to be fit to become wrestlers themselves or, you know, things like that. So take it in because they, you're, you're making an impression on somebody. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, for me, it takes me back a little bit. Cause like, I don't think I'm 99.9% .9 of the time the bad guy, which I'm sure you can't imagine because you've always seen the good side of, of sassy Steffi, never the bad. True, that is true. <laughs> but I'm not, not a very nice person in the ring. So to have somebody come and be like, yo, I really enjoy what you do. Here's something I made or something I bought for you. It's just incredible. Yeah, yeah it's, it's heartwarming. I always find it incredibly flattering um, that people – really enjoy it's validating to know that people really enjoy the work you're putting into what you love to do um and are fortunate enough to get hopefully paid to to, to do what you love um that they want more of it that they appreciate it so much that they bring you something as a gift or something hey look what you inspired me i mean i get a lot of you know, when I saw your movie, it made it made me want to be a filmmaker, and I'm I'm going to film school now and things like that. And that's that's really great because we were just a bunch of guys. Kevin went to school with Scott Mosier up in Vancouver and met um, Dave uh, Klein, who was the DP, and they came back to where Kevin lived in Jersey 
and where he worked at the quick stop to make this simple movie that literally only has like two locations in it uh, with a lot of just dialogue and dialogue mm -hmm. that was just something unique to, you know, guys in New Jersey, but it wasn't, we thought it was, but it wasn't. And it resonated with tons of people and Jay and silent Bob character resonated with quite a few people and, and people want more of it. And we're, we're, we're very blessed that uh, people enjoy it. Just like you should be very blessed that people enjoyed what you do in the ring. Definitely. Now, talking about Clerks and all the movies that you've done, when you first filmed that, did you think that this would become like this kind of cult classic movie at all? Oh, no. No, not at all. I mean, I was doing theater, local community theater at the time. Um, this was my first film that I'd ever done. Um, first film for pretty much everybody involved. And uh, when making it, at most, I was thinking, first of all, we were all deferred payment, which means you're, you sign a contract where people promise you that if the film makes money, you'll get some money. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and the other thing was you get a, we had a VHS copy of the film. Uh, kids ask your grandparents what a VHS <laughs> copy is. Um, and so um, making it, the topics we were talking about, the subjects uh, that we were talking about, we didn't see in mainstream films. So I thought it would just be, I'd have my VHS copy to one day show friends, hey, look at this film that I did in this group, you know, convenience store with a bunch of these guys, isn't this hilarious? And that would have been as far as it went. But fortunately enough that Dave, Klein and Scott Mosier and Kevin knew more, obviously they went to film school about how mm -hmm. to get your film seen by submitting it to film festivals. Hopefully people like it. They show and screen your film and hopefully there's someone in the distribution world that likes it enough that says, hey, let me buy the rights to show your movie and blah, 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 blah. And um, so we filmed it in like March of 93. They edited it throughout the summer, and this was on film, 16 millimeter film, super 16 millimeter film that you cut and tape together with a separate sound mix and you have two machines to splice it together. And then it entered uh, its first film festival in October of 93, where it was literally on the last day of a film festival. It was a Sunday um, at 11 a.m. where people are still hung over from the Saturday night parties the night before. Um, we had about 20 people in the audience, 12 of them of us were from the movie. So about eight people that we didn't know. Uh, we were fortunate enough that a gentleman by the name of Bob Hawk was in that audience, saw the film, really liked it, took a couple of days to think about it and talk to some other people in the industry who then reached out to Kevin and says, hey, you should really um, submit this film to Sundance, which it did on the recommendation of Bob Hawk. And then once we had our four screenings there, uh, which got the tickets sold out before the festival even started. Oh, wow. Uh, in January 94, it was uh, bought by the Miramax company and the rest is history. I mean, that's like you, you go, like you said, you have this deferred payment, you're gonna get a VHS and then it just blows up into something that 20 what 30 years almost we later just you're still... literally today as we're recording this is the uh 26th anniversary of its release october 19th is when we're actually releasing this yeah. you can bleep that out if you want no worries um, everybody is, knows uh, it's pre-recorded okay so the uh, internet. is uh is literally the release of the film theatrically so um yeah 26 years ago tonight i was sitting in a movie theater watching the premiere of the movie for a paying audience um never thought i mean even in the beginning when it was released it didn't do amazing in the box office it, at mm -hmm. most it made three million dollars in the in the end of when it was all said and done where it got its following was when we still had rental places to go mm -hmm. and rent your vhs copy of films that you wanted to see at your local blockbuster your hollywood hollywood videos your mom and pop rental stores like mm -hmm. the quick, you know, the RST video that's featured in uh, Clerks. Um, that's where it was handed from friend to friend, party to party. Dude, you got to totally watch this movie. 
and that's where it blew up. We went to a, um, there's an industry just like every industry has their own convention and there's a convention for VHS buyers, mom and pop, you know, video stores would go to these conventions to find what's the next movie I should have in my store. And so me and Jeff Anderson on the behest of um, Buena Vista Video, who, who owns Miramax at the time, said, hey, go to this to sign copies of VHS, copies of your film, so we can get people to buy cases of the film to put into their rental stores. And so I remember we were at one of these after dinner galas. This was up in at the Concord Hotel in upstate New York. Um, one, one executive came over like, do you know your movie is one of the most unreturned and stolen videos in our chain. This guy was one of the VIPs of uh, Blockbuster at the time. I go, really? He goes, yes. Yeah. So I go, well, that's our fan base, a bunch of cheap thieves. Would you like to order 20 more cases? <laughs> True story. That's amazing. And yeah. can I just say congratulations, 26 years. I it mean... is. It is. It's, uh, it's an amazement <laughs> that uh, I'm still alive. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, 26 years today that I get to interview you. I had no clue whatsoever. And like you said, you're still alive. We're still here talking about it. And we may make another one next year. Yeah. It, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> and then maybe another one. Grumpy your old clerks. <laughs> like you the can... old Wather Matthau and Jack London uh, Lemon uh, movie, Grumpy Old Guy. Well, I mean, as long as the the uh, audience is there for it, why would you stop? I would keep going. Why not? I enjoy it. And I'm sure Kevin enjoys writing the movies oh, and putting absolutely. them all together too. And I mean, obviously you guys now have been friends for many, many years. Cause I mean, 26, 27 years. Yeah. So there you go. 27 years making the same idea of a movie together with your friends. I mean, that sounds yeah, like the was, best kind it, of career. It definitely was a lot of fun. When we, uh, when we did the new Jay and Silent Bob reboot, mm -hmm. where a lot of the characters got to pop up in the film, it was really nice. We, it was weird. We shot it down in New Orleans. As a matter of fact, uh, the people down in New Orleans, the, the carpenters down there, built the entire storefront of the Quick Stop in front of another location down in New Orleans. It was really freaky. <laughs> and I remember, you know, me and Kevin, I think this day three is that scene, the opening scene that you saw in the movie uh, was like day three of filming. Mm -hmm. um, I remember just for 20 minutes, me and Kevin are just sitting looking in front of this quick stop replica going like, I, I can't believe the detail they put into this. It's so creepy. It's so weird. And here we are in New Orleans. And, and uh, it just was nice to go like, hey, you know, it's nice to see the fans still appreciate the film and appreciate these characters to want to see where are they now. And uh, I mean, Kevin will keep making these movies. He has no lines to remember. He's silent Bob. <laughs> he just shows up. Yeah, he may have had a couple lines, though, in Reboot. Eh, he had that big scene with Jericho <laughs> in the new one. I know. But, I mean, that's a lot of fun. And, I mean, obviously you're keeping busy during uh quarantine. zoom calls zoom calls zoom plays you have twitch going on now too and your very own podcast i'd love to talk about that because sure. obviously we want to get more people to check out what you're into and what you're absolutely. doing absolutely i mean these are some of the locations where they can uh, sign up for it so that's the best way to find more about it it's and you know it's uh like I said earlier, it's something that I uh, had been talking about doing for the past four years. I mean, Kevin has like 329 different podcasts that he's on. He has his own network and everything. And so, uh, and good friends of mine, Mike and Ming uh, from the Comic Book Men series, they have their own studio, uh, a shared universe studio in Eatontown, New Jersey. And so they're, they're podcasting and producing other people's podcasts left and right. They made a business out of it. So uh, it was a, it was a no brainer once we were literally locked down uh, to not start it up and reach out to people. And that was the funny thing about this is like, uh, you know, you could contact some guests and like, Hey, how would you like to come on the show? I know you're not doing anything because <laughs> you're not allowed to be filming. You're not allowed to be. So don't tell me you're not available. 
Right. You definitely have no excuse right now. <laughs> right, right. Thanks to COVID. Exactly. Well, before we wrap things up, we did sure. your social media, which is awesome, but it is the Halloween show. So what is your favorite Halloween movie? Ooh, you know, um, favorite Halloween movie, like to scare the bejesus out of me, um, is still for me because I'm old school. It's still like the exorcist. The exorcist classic. is so classically like, Oh my God, scary. Um, the original Jamie Lee Curtis Halloween, really, really good. Um, I'm not a, I'm not an active fan of like the hostels, um, you know, things, anything that's like overtly crazy violent. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a suspense, you know, thriller kind of silence of the lambs where you're trying to figure out. And then there are just brief moments of like, Oh God, that's, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the type of, uh, I mean, and I have a lot of friends who are huge huge gigantic horror fans i mean i did the closest thing i did to a horror film was this comedy called brutal massacre a comedy and it had some of the greatest icons of horror movies in the movie mm -hmm. uh, i co-starred with david naughton who was the star of uh, american werewolf in london ken Faree from dawn of the dead we also had ellen sandweiss actually all the women from the original evil dead movie in it uh, and we had a really great comedian by the name of Jerry Bednob in it. And it's a movie about the making of a horror film, of a very bad horror film. It's a hilarious <laughs> comedy. I play the, the first AD, the first, ad, 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 the first assistant director in it while um, David Naughton plays the director of this very bad film. It's, it's uh, written and directed in real life by a filmmaker by the name of Stephen Mena, who directed the malevolence horror film trilogy which i helped produce the third installment of that uh trilogy and that's a really good horror trilogy if you want to follow that if you're a fan of like the halloween movies and things like that check uh malevolence um bereavement and then malevolence three killer uh is a great trilogy that you can find uh i think it's malevolencemovie.com um but those type of movies you know, that's, that's what gets me is the, the omen, I, you know, it's this, the movies that were made in the seventies, early eighties that I really, really enjoy besides obviously silence of the lambs, which was the nineties. Yeah. I mean, there's so many great ones. I mean, you've named so many classic ones that are always on everybody's, you know, list of the 31 movies to watch in October Correct. for sure. Right. Me, I'm a little bit more of a scaredy cat nowadays. So I stick to the nice Casper. That's my favorite one. And I'm sure, you're, uh, I'm sure your kid will enjoy that. I can't wait to get him into that. I think maybe he's still a little too young to understand. He's still, you know, too much into the PBS shows right now. But did maybe... See... Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was like, did you see they re-released Hocus Pocus in theaters? I did. That's another one that's on my list that I can't wait for him to watch. I watched that yeah. the other day, in fact. <laughs> But random enough, I never watched Hocus Pocus until last year. Yeah, I just, I never really sat down to watch it. And then last year, my husband was like, hey, you've got to see this movie. And I was like, I've wanted to for years and years and years. And I just never sat down to do it. And now Disney Plus makes it so easy to just, whoop, right? it's on. Of course, not <laughs> last year. Last year, who knows what we did if it was on Netflix or something, who knows. But because right. uh, we weren't renting it, that's for sure, from anywhere. Unless nope. it was from our cable. Maybe it was from our cable company. Maybe we rent it on demand, maybe. Or maybe uh, Amazon Prime or whatever. Yeah, something like that. Whatever we had last year. Mm. But Brian, it's been so much fun. I thank you so much for being on our show. Not even at though, all, anytime. I am not even supposed Here, I'll give it to you. <laughs> thank you. So Brian, I'm so glad that you are here today. I can't thank you enough. I mean, you came in for me when I needed you the most. You got it. I'm there for you, kid. Anytime, any subject, we can talk about it. And uh, good luck with everything. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yes. And don't forget, also, actually, I forgot this part. Don't forget about your podcast as well. We got to tell people about your podcast. We didn't we yes, talk about you wanna, everything else, but not If you the... want to sign up for it, there you go. It is the Ohala rant. That's right. I rant about things. Surprise, surprise. You can find it on Facebook at the Ohala rant, YouTube, the Ohala rant, on Twitch, 
It's Brian C. O'Halloran on Twitch. We also have a Twitter and an Instagram account. That's the O'Halloran on both of those. You can see that. Please uh, feel free to join up, subscribe. Uh, we'll get you on that so you don't have to worry about coming up with the questions, just answering the questions. Oh, that would be a blast. I would love Sweet. to. Maybe I can get you and Leva Bates together. I know you're yes. good friends. Yes, Leva and I. Funny story as we finish, I told Leva about our friendship from Fireball Run and she actually got to meet the first year I did it. I was in Orlando and I went to a dinner with the Fireball Run guys. So she got to meet Jay and, and Brian oh, right at the on. time, the, uh, the director, because we went out to dinner. And then, so like, it was just funny that she met you and then me, we all knew each other. So you guys- Small world. Every time you guys see each other at conventions, you always take a picture and tag always. me. <laughs> and then tell them like, come on, we got to tag Steph, let's go. And if we meet up, I'll do it for you. And if I see Leva anytime in the near future, we'll do the same for you as well. I'm way overdue to go to see Quebec. I've never been to Quebec. Oh, please come. It's beautiful, especially in the summer. Yeah. Last year, I got to go up to Montreal because I was just over the border in Plattsburgh at a convention. And at the end of the convention, we went into Montreal for dinner. So well, I'm uh, right Quebec, outside Quebec, of Montreal. So the Quebec is the next thing and you. So once this all settles down and we can, uh, we're can, we allowed to be in each other's countries, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, we'll definitely make it a dinner. All right. Once again, thank you so much, Brian, for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, that's it for this Halloween episode. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And this is Talking Sass. We'll see you guys next time. How awesome was Brian? I hope that you guys really enjoyed that episode as much as I did because he's such a wonderful and entertaining person. And, you know, I really hope that you guys got to learn a thing or two about him. So don't forget, go check out all of his social medias. He has posted up there for you guys. And make sure you check out The O'Hallorant on YouTube. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe to Talking Sass as well. And of course, you have Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Patreon, all for me. So make sure you go subscribe, check out all those things, like, favorite, comment, all of that. Now, before we close up today, two important things that I want to say. First, if you're going out for Halloween or taking in any sort of Halloween activities, make sure that you stay social distance, have hand sanitizer at all time and wear those masks. So important, wear those masks. And then next week, don't forget to make sure you guys go out and vote. It is the most important thing you can do as an American and make sure your voice is heard. I don't care who you're voting for. Just make sure you go out and vote. That is so very important. So until next time, guys, stay safe and happy Halloween.